Hello, welcome or welcome back to another video. This week, I finished a study despite encountering some problems and gave my thoughts on color mixing and how to overcome a bad art day. Let's get started. The supplies I used include Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper, Faber-Castell's 12 set of Polychromos color pencils, Dorant drawing pencils in Light Sienna, Blue Smoke, Ink Blue, Olive Earth, and the 6 pencil red set, a Derwent pencil extender, a white Posca acrylic paint pen, and Daniel Smith's watercolor essentials set. As always, I started by transferring my rough sketch onto the watercolor paper using a light box. I used to do this step with a graphite pencil, but I've been using polychromos for a few weeks now, and I'm happy with the versatility colored lines provide. After taping the paper to my desk, I started mixing my colors for the test thumbnails. I don't normally film this or the thumbnail studies themselves, but it's actually an integral part of my traditional mixed media studies. By working with pre-mixed and tested colors, I can save time during the final and not feel rushed to mix colors together before the paper dries. My favorite part of the watercolor phase was the far away background because of the colors and softness from the wet on wet techniques I used. I love the freedom out of focus references give me to play without worrying about edges or backgrounds or splotchy textures. One thing I've learned these past couple of months is that watercolor dulls when it dries, which is why I always go back to punch up the contrast, in this case with a deeper blue green. As the background dried, I lay down more colors like the hair and wall behind the figure. Since the skin wasn't painted, these colors looked too bright and saturated. I had to resist the urge to blot these areas to mute them back down. Color is relative, which can both help and hinder you when you paint. Right now, these colors look too bright, but in a few more layers, once everything else has been painted, they won't stand out nearly as much. This is particularly noticeable with her orange-red hair. I could have gone straight to brown for the shadows, but I didn't. By layering brown on top of a warm base, I took advantage of watercolor's transparency and maintained the warm glow I saw in the reference. The trouble started, as it often does, with the skin. Up until this point, I didn't need a smooth, uniform wash. It's been dry this spring, which meant hard edges started forming before I could finish laying down the base skin tone. This problem only worsened with subsequent layers. I think I could have fixed this by laying down water on the shadow areas before I went in with paint or by using a larger brush that held more water overall. In the past, this would have spilled the end of this study. Luckily, I know how to correct uneven layers with dry media. Once everything was dry, I moved the study to an angle to finish it. If you're wondering, this is actually a lap desk meant for laptops that I've repurposed along with a stack of books as a tabletop easel of sorts. The important thing for me is the angle. This helps me accurately judge proportions and forms, and also helps my back. Anyway, you'll notice I went right in with the eyes first. This area doesn't have blending issues like the skin, but it did lack contrast since I didn't have a liner brush. I was able to pick out the pupils and lash line with my dark color pencils. You can see that this immediately brought some life back to the figure by defining the darkest and most contrasted areas. From there, I began working on the skin, adding edges where they were needed and softening forms in other areas. One of the challenges of this reference, and part of why I picked it, is that the figure's skin creates interesting, subtle shadow colors. Since she was photographed on a sunny day, the shadows have a cool blue undertone, which translates to an almost gray-purple on her. You wouldn't think to use blue for skin tones, but it's often necessary to neutralize the warm tones and to add realism. I might have added Derwent Smoke Blue to my limited collection to help render shadows in pale fabric, but it also did an excellent job with the shadow side of the figure's face here. My favorite part of the wet media phase was the foliage, but my favorite part for the dry media was definitely her hair. Here, I could push the saturation and contrast even more with my true orange and red color pencils and also add white highlights. For the brightest strands that were directly in sunlight, I broke out the Posca paint pen to use as a base. 
I might have been able to preserve the papers white with masking fluid, but I don't have any, so this is a good alternative. I rarely leave things true white though, even here, since it would look out of place. Instead, I layer on top to mesh things together. If the skin was the sticking point in the watercolor phase, the neck was the problem here. I spent a long time fussing with layering and relayering color to try to mute the hair shadows, to soften, then harden the shapes, and generally to try to make things work with the rest of the piece. There were several things working against me, however, but the one that preoccupied me was color. I couldn't seem to match the shadows to the face shadows, despite using the same color combinations. In retrospect, I think my real issue was contrast. We often think things will look right if we can just find the right color, but what really defines 3D form is value. This is why black and white charcoal drawings or value studies still look realistic. Here, I had too much contrast between the shadows and the base skin tone. I was on the right track by the end when I layered one pencil over everything, but then… oof, yeah. I was trying to correct a shape with a Posca pen, and it exploded. To tell you the truth, I wasn't terribly happy with the study so far, but I had been persevering out of sheer stubbornness. When this happened, it felt like adding insult to injury on what I saw as a not great art day. So I ended up setting the study aside to work on some other things. When I came back the next day, things still didn't look good, but I had some ideas of how to fix the mess. The first step was layering the more opaque Derwent pencils to match the existing shadow values. I then re-added the hair cast shadows, paying more attention to their placement and curves that helped show the form underneath. I could have spent another half hour to hour fiddling with things here, but I decided to focus that effort elsewhere. What followed were a bunch of minute adjustments to facial features after careful observation. Each stroke doesn't seem to change things, but they all add up, and eventually, this study was finally done. Now that I've had a couple of days away from this study, I'm actually okay with it. I definitely can approve from it, but I'm glad I pushed myself to finish it despite encountering multiple setbacks. I hope this process video gave you some insight on how I think when I do studies, and as always, I hope you create something that brings you joy. See you Monday for a sketchbook session and tips on finishing old sketchbooks. Bye!